Oh, next we have uh, Derek from Men in the Den. He's a uh, YouTube star from Yarmouth. So let's give it up for him. Forgive me if I choke up a bit because I am really moved by this whole thing. Give yourselves a round of applause, Yarmouth. And may I start this out with Happy Pride! I can't even begin to tell you how happy I am because never, ever did I think that I would hear the questions, are you coming home for Pride? Yarmouth? Pride? Seriously, I'm not just shook, I'm baba shook right now. But seriously, let's give a huge round of applause for Joey, Megan, and Cass for putting this all together. And hold up, let's say some more applause and a huge yas to the volunteers who dedicated their time. That's right. Now, some of you are wondering, who is this fabulous fat man on stage? What is Meta the Den? Is he a bear? My name is Derek. I'm from this town. I grew up in Chicago. I live in Halifax now. I'm out, loud, proud, homosexual. Let me clear up a couple things for you. Straight men, if we hit on you, be flattered. We're very picky. <laughs> and in recent news, apparently we control the weather. This is according to uh, 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 critics of Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Harvey causing so much damage out south. Oh, honey. If we control the weather, you would have summers without humidity because your hair should never have to suffer. And lesbians would have just enough rain for the gardens. It would only snow on Christmas. And a tornado would have dropped the damn, uh, damn house on Ed Coulter for viewing us the wicked bitch of the South. <laughs> then a young Judy Garland would come down in an adorable red pair of shoes. And we'd all sing and song and dance the songs of freedom. And just enough wind for a fierce selfie. Okay, yeah, so you're a big uh, extra. Why are you on stage? <laughs> they asked me to be. Okay, enough sass, enough sass. I represent a YouTube channel called Men of the Den. We're what we call within our community, bears, which is pretty self-explanatory. Fat, hairy, homosexuals. We like to sleep, eat, and we're very communal. We post daily on various topics, sometimes within the realm of the LGBTQ, Sometimes we are talking music, movies, food. We are a slice of life channel by a group of guys who are also husky, hairy homos. Where are they, you ask? Well, this is an international channel, and we didn't, there was no budget to fly them in from Manchester, Portland, Oregon, uh, Niagara Falls in Minnesota, as well as... Austra uh, we do have members from Australia as well. Now, my boyfriend is also part of the channel, but sadly he couldn't get time off work. But I assure you, he's perfect, he's beautiful, and he does look like Linda Evangelista. But you're stuck with me! <laughs> so, the channel has allowed Greg and I to explore things that we would have norm normally have never done. And the biggest reason that we do this is it allows us to take our life experiences, our hard times that we had growing up, the mistakes that we made, and the lessons learned and then apply them for a voice of a generation that we wish we had growing up. It's become a way for us to express ourselves and spread the word of others to love yourself and be yourself, because everyone will love you for that. Thank you. Because back in the time when I was a young kid, the media painted a far different picture of queerness back in the late 80s and into the 90s. Sure, we had the androgyny of David Bowie, Annie Lennox, Pete Burns running the music stations, you had shows such as Golden Girls, Three's Company, taking on queer themes. It was still visibility, which is great. Into the 90s, you had the final rise of Queen, Freddie Mercury. You had Ellen's coming out, the movie The Birdcage, and supermodel of the world, RuPaul. But that was here or there. What you mostly heard about us is that HIV AIDS was an epidemic. That if you were gay, you had AIDS, which at a time was a guaranteed death sentence. Gladly, is not so much the case these days. We had the club kids and drug culture. You couldn't land work, you had a hell of a time finding a home, and there was a constant threat of gay bashing. This made it difficult to come out, it was difficult to find pride. Pride to days like this existed, only you, couldn't, you had to go with your head covered, as you could lose your job if you were seen marching. Society was rough, the kids were tougher. I knew when I was pretty young that I was different, and I was constantly getting teased, I was very socially awkward. But it never didn't really want another target on my back, and that's what made me hesitant. 
as I got through university, I was starting to become surrounded in all things queer. My best friend came out, my roommate came out, my neighbor came out, I moved into a place and all of my flatmates came out. It was all around me, but I could never admit it to myself. Any fantasy I had involved men. Locker rooms were the most awkward spot you could ever imagine. I knew what was up, but I still wanted a normal life. There eventually became a time when I started dating men, but even then I still couldn't say it to myself. Not without, a, not with any sense of pride anyways. It came to a point when I eventually did come out, and I told my friends first and said, we're not surprised. <laughs> and then it eventually came to my family, who I am so grateful for having an amazing support system. And parents in the crowd, if your kid is to come out, love them, be there for them, they are going to need your support. Also, it does not mean at all that you failed as a parent, just that your family has a bit of extra flair being added to it. But there's still a shell I was hiding in. Socially, in my formative years, I would hear the phrase, it's okay to be gay, just don't be flaming. <laughs> I'm getting there. Oh, he's so flamboyant. Oh, he's annoying. Girl! That's toxic masculinity in its place, and there's no place for it. Yeah, sure, I wanted to be masculine. I wanted to be taken seriously. I still wanted to listen to metal, drink beer, whiskey, and the worst term of all, be a man. And to this day, I do drink beer. I do listen to metal. But I brought in my musical snope, and there's always time for a cocktail. I'm still, no, I'm still a man, but I know myself better. My pride was found in a breakup. I had a boyfriend who dumped me a few days before pride. Last thing I wanted to do was go out and celebrate being gay when I was so upset. My friend Kat called me and said, get over it. It was time for the great gay ritual that you all know as brunch. She dragged me out and the excitement of her friends really brought me into a different place. After brunch, I saw the people lined up for the parade. I couldn't believe it. It was the colors, the loud music, and the one memory, Yarmasone at Neville Bacay in the back of a Cadillac, throwing flower petals all over the place. It was that hit extra I needed to wake up. I'll never forget it, you know? The parade was over. I was in tears by being moved to the community. They were rooting for people like me, like us, that we could be celebrated and we could be ourselves. My friend Sean took me by the hand walked me through the end of the parade to the garrison grounds. And that's kind of where I started feeling like I'm finally my place of where I belong. Now let's fast forward a couple of years, so picture this, Halifax, maybe 2014. Made myself this, I, oh, missing myself in the script here. I was, I was in my first parade. The theme of the float was, it takes a village, people. So, I got a hard hat, I got a reflective vest, I got some knee-high work socks and made myself the shortest short shorts you could imagine. Hanky in the back pocket and leather suspenders. Honey, I was ready to party. It was one moment. We hit the corner at Spring Garden Road and Barrington Street. The float had stopped. The music was between songs and there were just so many people everywhere I looked. Generations. Old ladies with their faces painted. Kids holding up the flags. I looked at the top of the stairs of the Maritime Center and there were my friends cheering me on. Suddenly the stereo kicked back in and the lyrics came up. It doesn't matter if you love him or capital H-I-M. So put your paws up, baby, because you were born this way. I have never danced so hard in my life, honey! <laughs> Screaming at the top of my lungs, singing Lady Gaga's Born This Way, everyone else on the float felt the energy. There's a giant party the rest of the way and the route continued. There's so many people who are important in my life in that crowd cheering me on. Just then, Cher's Believe comes on and one of the local queens comes running up to the float and me and her have the fiercest lip sync off. The parade was over. I got off the float. I cried so many tears of joy. It was then I found myself the extra fabulous fat so you see before you and every Monday on Men of the Dead. I also remember, after it was all done, I found my friends, we went to a pub to grab my beer, and we saw an ex that dumped me a few years ago ride my bike. It was one of those slow motion moments where you just wanted to look and I could have knocked him off his bike with the side eye I was throwing. We acknowledged each other, we went our separate paths. It felt like it was closure that time, because I knew later that day I was going home with the most amazing person who's been part of my life for the last seven years. 
That was how I found my pride. I put myself on display in a vulnerable state, showing the world I am me, this is who I am, and you love me for it. I have not been in a parade since, but I enjoy watching to see what other people see other people have that moment. Today, I get to see my hometown spread the love, celebrate diversity, and let the world know we do not tolerate hate amongst our lesbian, gay, bi, trans, or queer persons in our community. Yes, this does happen every year in Canada. Everything appears to be okay for us, but I've heard people ask, then why do we need to keep having pride parades? Let me tell you why, but let's address another question that I've been hearing far too much, and let's nip this in the butt right now. Why can't we have straight pride? Uh-huh. Honey. Gay pride was not born out of the need to celebrate being gay, instead to exercise our right to exist without persecution. Instead, why isn't there a straight pride month or moment? You should be thankful you don't need one. <laughs> While Trudeau has been amazing with trans equality and his appearances in pride parades, we do still have a few fights in Canada. Despite scientific breakthrough with HIV AIDS treatments with uh, medicines such as Truvada and PrEP, we are and being able to determine your HIV status within minutes, gay persons have limitations in donating blood. South of the border, Trans persons are banned from the military. Religious Freedom Acts allow businesses to discriminate against, against the LGBT freely if their religious seat fits. And under Trump, the constant threat of having marriage equality revoked and other rights taken away. We have countries such as Uganda and Jamaica and other places around the world where being gay is punishable by death. We have terrorist groups rounding up gay people and throwing up buildings. Not to, let's not forget Chechnya, where the police are rounding up gay men putting them into concentration camps, and we're sending the home to be put to death by their own family. And this is government run. And let us never forget, because we are still the target. Sorry, this part is pretty hard for me. June 2016, 49 people lost their lives in a nightclub in Orlando. I was there the week before. Men of the, Men of the Den attends Disney Gay Days every year, which is one of the world's biggest pride events. And the group we travel with stays around for about two weeks and they, as they all travel from the UK. A number of them were at Pulse that night. Well, they had left before it all went down, but the last thing I saw on Facebook that night before is people going out. I will never forget waking up that morning. My Facebook was flooding with messages asking if I was all right. And then turning on the news and just found out a gunman went into a gay club and opened fire. No one should ever have to wake up frantically messaging all your friends to find out if they're still alive. It was the worst day of my life, and still to this day, it does bring, thought, bring back memories of confusion, sorrow, and grief. We, are turned, we returned to Orlando this year to see a community strengthened. Disney has been far more proud of this annual event. The staff were all in their red shirts. Everything was gay, 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 and our annual Drinks Around the World event at Epcot. We had random groups of people joining us, celebrating us, being out in the open, and living life. We went to a restaurant, nine clearly drunk, burly gay men. Most restaurants would dread this table. Immediately, we had staff demanding to take that table because they wanted to serve us the way we deserve to be treated. I couldn't bring myself to visit the Pulse Memorial due to emotions and it's, gay days is very, very hectic. It's go, go, go. But I, if you're gonna go down there, I highly recommend checking it out. And you have to do the Country Bear Jamboree at one o'clock. It is the gayest thing you'll ever see. But we did have members of the dead who did go down to, to go down Pulse. They said it was eerie, heavy at heart, and still the sense of pride. But this is why we still have pride. It's to celebrate our achievements, to make awareness that we still have a lot of work to do. Think about how much easier it is for this new generation. The way is mostly paved for them. They have role models now. We have shows such as RuPaul's Drag Race, Modern Family, and other shows exploring queer themes such as American Horror Story and Game of Thrones. Musicians, we have Tegan and Sarah, Mickey Blanco, uh, Big Dipper, uh, Tyler the Creator, Sam Smith, Running the Airwaves. Yeah. Not to mention, we have icons like Ellen Page, Laverne Cox, and Chaz Bono. And that's just the big names. We also live in a world where we can discover new role models thanks to the powers of YouTube. So, someone who may be confused by their gender identity can go and safely watch stories from another person's shared experience and do the research they need to do to come out. And with the den, we're a group of people who don't normally fit the mold of what gay looks like. And we're, uh, we're a place for someone who feels like they don't fit in to listen to our shared experiences, discussing topics of queer politics, progress. Not only that, 
seeing us have fun where we sing songs, challenge each other, talk comic books, video games, and maybe learn something new. We are inherently the voice we wish we had growing up. We've had people tell us the reasons that they come out, that we are the reasons that they've come out. We've been the reason they've learned a new language and started studying abroad and exploring the world. We've been a beacon of light for people who face hardships. Seeing our daily videos brightens their day, and that is humbling. It really inspires tears of joy because I wish I had that growing up in the 90s. So to close up, everyone out there, first and foremost, the parents, love your children. Yeah. If you are having a coming out conversation with your son or daughter, you've done nothing wrong. You may be confused for the next little while trying to figure out their life, and that's completely normal. They're doing the same thing. So try as much as you can to stay on the same page with them, love them, and make sure they know home is a safe place. To the newly out, or the ready to come out, it's a hard life, and this is a very awkward time of your life. The late Edie Windsor had a short quote with so much resilience. Don't postpone joy. You will know when you are ready, and don't be afraid. Another quote that recently shook me is that gay people act like teenagers because they didn't have their teenage lives to live. It's very true, and it's never early, too early to live or too late. There's going to be bullies. There's going to be hardships ahead. You will deal with haters who don't understand you, and they may never understand you, but that's not your problem. You do you, boo. The already out and loud queer community. Stand loud, stay proud, and let us cherish our growth in history. Let us remember the Martha P. Johnson, Divine, the Harvey Milks, and the other trailblazers that are allowing us to stand here today and preserve our queer history of drag queens, performers, produ producers, music, musicians, what have you, and pass the knowledge down to our youth. And never let us put up that fire that was started at Stonewall. Because those there may be a day that we may never have to come out, but never let us fight, let us never forget the fight that took us here and how much more we have to do. In closing, I'd like to channel one of the greatest role models this community ever had. The work the words of RuPaul. Everybody follow me. Everybody say love! love. Again, love. love! And one more time, Millie Love! love. Thank you!